Well, everything in moderation. That's an old Greek proverb, and it's usually associated with overeating and other bad habits. It also holds true for certain superfoods like spinach, almonds, and even some berries. Medical reporter Lori Johnson explains why too much of some healthy foods can be toxic. If a food is good for you, then eating more of it is even better, right? Not necessarily. In some cases, too much of a good thing can become bad. You can get yourself into trouble and have no idea, so it carries on for a long time because you would never suspect your favorite great food. Some so-called superfoods like spinach, chia seeds, beets, and raspberries are high in oxalate. That's an often harmless chemical compound that for some people proves problematic if eaten in large amounts. Now the fashions are these foods that are high in the oxalate are very popular and promoted as good for us. So it's really easy to overdo it. Other foods to watch for are quinoa, beans, and almonds because they're often consumed in large amounts especially in gluten-free or dairy-free diets. The almond milk and the almond flour, the almonds are thrown into every trail bar and trail mix and new version of granola and snacks everywhere and desserts. Almonds are a big problem because they're being adopted at a rate and being eaten at a rate that's never been done before. Oxalate can attach to the minerals in our body and prevent these important nutrients from being absorbed. One example is calcium, which is necessary for strong bones. A calcium deficiency could lead to developing brittle bones, also known as osteoporosis. And with men, it's particularly fatal. It seems to be that men break a bone, they're more likely to have that end up shortening their lives significantly. Mm -hmm. Eating a lot of these high oxalate foods can also be tied to the formation of kidney stones. Any kind of urinary tract problems are classic oxalate problems. For years, nutritionist Sally Norton wondered why she suffered from foot pain, sleep problems, and arthritis. During the same time, she ate a lot of potatoes and Swiss chard. When she stopped eating those high oxalate foods, those health problems also stopped. This really shocked me because I'm supposed to know how to be healthy, and I didn't. She says others suffering from unexplained physical or mental health problems might want to examine whether they too could be eating too much of a good thing. Oxalates are classically known to start harming digestion over time when you start having digestive issues that can look like stomach problems or reflux. It can look like swallowing problems or more commonly things like irritable bowel syndrome. So if you're someone who eats a lot of your favorite superfood, if it's high in oxalate, it might be wise to back off a little. Well, Lori Johnson joins us now with some toxic superfoods and their swaps. And Lori, I've got to say at the start, I'm kind of getting tired of hearing, well, if you if you do this, then you're you're harming yourself. And then when you try to get a good diet, it's it's sort of like the old adage, water is really good for you, but it's also the leading cause of drowning. <laughs> so how, how how do you how do you find the I guess the right path forward? And let's start with spinach because. Right. Uh, when that was on the list, I was going, you got to be kidding me. You know, I made this beautiful dinner the other night of uh, sautéed salmon with spinach and um. cherry tomatoes. Yes, and why didn't you invite me? I thought I was doing really great. I thought I was. And then I, I hear your report and I'm going, mm -hmm. spinach is bad? Yeah. Well, I'm really glad you brought that up because normal amounts of spinach for people who are generally healthy are fine. What we're talking about today are foods that you should not overdo. For some people who overdo these foods can have some health problems. And let's face it, some of us do overdo foods. A Me? lot of us, I know I do. I, I, a lot of us get into ruts where we eat a lot of the same food hmm. morning, noon, and I, night, like spinach. So I'm not supposed to get it by the bucket? Right, uh-huh. Just about a cup of spinach is about <laughs> as, as good. But you
but you know, some people put spinach really? on their omelet in their in the morning. They put it in their smoothie in the afternoon and have a giant spinach salad at night. So for folks like that then who might be concerned about oxalate overload, a great replacement is arugula. Now, arugula is extremely healthy. It has vitamin C. But it's better. A. It doesn't taste nearly as great as spinach. No! I love the taste you of arugula. Okay, like we better. can agree to disagree, but you know, other All low right. oxalate greens are um, now, romaine. Now remind me, oxalates do what to you? They bind to certain nutrients in your body and prevent your body from absorbing them, mm. like calcium, and we need our calcium. So uh, if you don't like arugula, which we can agree to disagree it's there, I love it. I love that little kick that it has, but most greens are very low in oxalates. Uh, romaine, iceberg, lettuce, uh, the only things, greens that are high in oxalates are spinach, Swiss chard, and beet greens. Which I all, I love all of those. Okay, it's okay to eat those in anyway, moderation. I love all of them. That's great. Beet greens was a real discovery. That, that's, they're, they're delicious. I used to throw them away, but they're, they're really good. Chocolate is a problem. Yum. Now, this is my chocolate favorite food. Chocolate is a problem. Dark chocolate, we're talking about 70% uh -huh. cacao or greater. It turns out that most dark chocolate, dark chocolate bars that were surveyed by Consumer Reports contained concerning levels of heavy metals, specifically cadmium or lead or both. So here's How the thing. How does lead get into chocolate? A lot of the times it's in the soil and other times it's in the processing. So for as so a the plant draws it out of the soil exactly. and puts it in the and fruit. Sometimes if you let the, uh, the cocoa, the beans sit for a long time, the lead can leach in, into it. So it's a complicated thing. If you want to know more about it, go to the Consumer Reports website. But just as a general rule of thumb, we're talking about consuming lots of dark chocolate, which is easy okay. to do. Uh, so one stick, ounce stick, is enough. stick with milk chocolate? Uh, no, that doesn't have the can health I, benefits. Can I have a whole, whole, whole box of C's candy? <laughs> oh yeah, I know where you're coming from. So uh, one ounce still gives you those wonderful health benefits, mm -hmm. lowers the cardiovascular risk, and one ounce is a safe amount when it comes to heavy metals. Well, another talk for a long time was the higher the cocoa ratio, yeah. the healthier it yes. was. And now you're saying, no, back that down. Well, generally that's true. The higher and also the higher the cocoa, the less sugar it has. Mm -hmm. So that's good too. Uh, just for some bars, not all, the, some of the ones that do not contain concerning levels of heavy metals are Ghirardelli, 72%, Ghirardelli, 86% cacao. So, uh, but if you, if you can't keep all that straight, just okay. as a general rule of thumb, only eat one ounce. That is Lord easier said than done. stock in that company. No, so. I do not. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I <Fish>. buy it. <laughs> fish, I'm trying to get a lot more fish in my diet and the red meat okay yeah that's an indulgence but fish i'm doing a lot of salmon Good. um what what's what are the bad ones well so you're doing great because uh the cdc and almost every other health expert says people should eat fish fish is extremely healthy although all fish has mercury, some more than others. So we really need to watch out for high mercury content fish. And an example of that is orange roughy, the big fish, yeah. shark, swordfish, some tile fish. So go to the low mercury fish. We've got salmon here, cod, whitefish, shrimp. If you want to know the whole list, go to the CDC website. Okay. All right. So we've got the good stuff. Kale. Kale is another. I grew up on food. kale. Dad was, you know, we got to eat kale. Yeah, and, and it's still a it great would, thing. Here's the thing it that does you make need your to kitchen know. smell a little bit. I, I'm one of these people who eats kale nor, morning, really? noon, and night. I love kale. And here's the thing about kale: it is fine, mm. except. If you buy the non-organic kind, the conventionally grown, the regularly grown kale, it has high levels of pesticides. Oh. So most nutritionists are, are say, look, if you don't normally buy organic, that's fine in some cases, but you probably should buy organic kale because it has high levels of pesticides. Other foods that are organically grown that have high levels of pesticides are strawberries, blueberries, grapes, apples. Can um, you soak them and get rid of that? Or not it, really, no. Not really. And when it's you enough. wash them. So, but if you don't want to buy organic, some of the lower pesticides, convent, pesticide conventionally grown 
foods are ones that sort of have rinds on the outside, mm -hmm. like like avocados and pineapples, citrus fruits, peas. Anything you can peel. Yeah, pretty much like that. And for that complete list, you can go to Environmental Working Group website, EWG, their, their website. Okay. Well, thanks for the information. I've got an education. Um, if you want more information, all you got to do is go to cbnnews.com. Get educated about what you're putting in your body and, and to, to the extent you can eliminate pesticides, anything related to heavy metals. We want you to live long and healthy. Absolutely. Uh, Amen.